I'm going to share with I'm going to share with you a little devotion that I came across um, just the other day. And I told Ross I thought it might be a good idea if we could do it. Um, however, did not have time to get to do it um, or to talk about it at the meeting because I just found out about this yesterday. But anyways, um, it's a devotion to Saint Joseph, um, and it's called the Seven Sundays. Um, and again, I just found this the other day. Um, so basically, it's uh, it's a, every Sunday for seven Sundays. There's um, a reading, a meditation, a couple of prayers, and then if you do it together, there's something kind of like some open discussion about the meditation or the discussion on it. But you can do it alone as well, also, and you make it a private devotion. That's fine. Um, I was hoping if we had time, I would actually uh, get us live on Zoom and do like a teleconference um, on Sunday evenings or afternoons. However, it has to be done on the seven Sundays before the Feast of St. Joseph, which is March 19th. So today, January 29th, is the first Sunday. So we need to start it now. And I know it's such short notice. And I know there's a concert at the church tonight. So some people are going to that and won't be able to you know, get online and do whatever. So I'm recording this one. And I'll send the, the link through Ross. Um, and you guys can watch it whenever. Um, so what is this? So it's basically... <clears throat> Again, a devotion is to St. Joseph leading up to his um, his day on March 19th. Um, the devotion consists of, it's looking at the joys and sorrows of St. Joseph, um, different ones every Sunday. We'll read a gospel passage that reflects that, and then there'll be a meditation about that, how it reflects his joys and his sorrows. And there'll be some prayers. Um, the litany of St. Joseph is said as part of it. Um I don't know this is really tied to an indulgence, like you have to do all these things exactly, but the quote-unquote rules say to do it on Sunday. It also says to go to Mass and receive communion on that Sunday. Now, um, I know Saturday Vigil Mass meets the Sunday requirement, so I guess you can go Saturday evening and receive communion and then do the devotion that day or do it the next day. Um, it's kind of all one big Sunday, I guess. So I don't know. But again, we're not talking about some indulgences here with very rigid, fixed rules. I think it's more about the intent. And the intent being, if you're going to focus and spend some time with St. Joseph, maybe to inspire you, to build more relationship with him, um, to be more of a model for us. You know, he is the patron of many things. Um, of course, he is a patron of husbands, fathers, and men in general, um, of which we're a men's group. And most of, most of you guys are husbands or fathers. Um, so it might not be a bad thing. Uh, this will overlap with some of our Advent seasons, so that might be a bit of a drawback, or maybe it could be your Advent, one of your Advent commitments to do this um, up and through, up and up and until his uh, March 19th, the end. Um, so ideally, what I'd like to do is I'm going to post this so you guys can watch it anytime and still get quote unquote credit for doing it today or tomorrow. Um, but we'll see about maybe sometime next Sunday afternoon or evening. I know there's mass on Sunday and see if some people go to that. So we'll try and figure out a way to work around that if you guys want. I'd love to do it on a teleconference just to call in, no video, um, but just call in so we can do the prayers together and maybe have a little group discussion about um, the meditation. Uh, you'll see here in a few minutes, it's very straightforward. It's not a big deal. Probably, I didn't time this, probably takes 10 minutes max. Um, but anyways, that's that. We, um, I'll answer more questions if you guys got any when we talk again next time. Um, but anyways, let's go and jump into it. So here's the background. You've probably read this screen by now. Uh, so St. Joseph appeared uh, to a couple of shipwrecked monks, um, encouraged them to pray uh, seven our fathers and Hail Marys. Uh, related to his sorrows, and this um, Italian, I'm guessing, uh, Sarnelli, um, he popularized um, this devotion. Um, now, the one we're going to read, now the prayers don't change, nor does the gospel reading, but what may change, depending on who you look up, is the meditation part. So the one I pulled up is from Pope St. John Paul II. He's got a meditation on each of the um, joys and sorrows for each weekend. Um, I know there's another one out there with uh, St. Jose Maria Escariva. He's got one as well, too. His meditations are a little bit different, um, but the bones of it are basically the same. And of course, you'll have your own interpretation, too. And, you know, meditations and, uh, you know, when we discern something, it's basically how to, we're trying to apply ourselves. There's no right or wrong way to this. Is what does it mean to us? Meditations are just a place to start. Speaking of starting, we'll get started here. So today is the first Sunday. 
And we're going to talk about his sorrow when he decided to leave Mary and then the joy he experienced when the angel told him what was going on, the mystery of the incarnation. So we'll start with an opening prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O chaste spouse of Mary, great was the trouble and anguish of your heart when you were considering quietly sending away your inviolate spouse. Yet your joy was unspeakable when the surpassing, surpassing mystery of the incarnation was made known to you by the angel. By this sorrow and this joy, we beseech you to comfort our souls, both now and in the sorrows of our final hour, with the joy of a good life and a holy death after the pattern of your life, own life and death in the arms of Jesus and Mary. Amen. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So today's reading, Matthew 1, 18-25, and I'll read this. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place this way. When, you know, I have to move my, my tab here to see this. <laughs> when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be a child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to send her away quietly. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had borne his son, and he called his name Jesus. So the, the meditation on this is called a consideration. It means meditation. So this is the one, from again, from St. John Paul II on some of his writings. There is a strict parallel between the Annunciation in Matthew's text and the one in Luke. The divine messenger introduces Joseph to the mystery of Mary's motherhood. While yet remaining a virgin, she, who by law is his spouse, has become a mother through the power of the Holy Spirit. And when the son in Mary's womb comes into the world, he must receive the name Jesus. Joseph is visited by the messenger as Mary's spouse, as the one who in due time must give this name to the son to be born of the Virgin of Nazareth, who is married to him. It is to Joseph, then, that the messenger turns, entrusting to him the responsibilities of an earthly father with regard to Mary's son. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife. He took her in all the mystery of her motherhood. He took her together with the Son who had come into the world by the power of the Holy Spirit. In this way, he showed a readiness of will, like Mary's, with regard to what God asked of him through the angel. So you can kind of look at this and kind of think, you know, contemplate what it means to you and all. Um, what I'm what I'm hearing here is, you know, when Joseph first learned she was pregnant, um, you know, his sorrow was he was going to put her away quietly, leave her. You know, so, you know, why was that sorrowful? Well, you know, this is a couple that was going to be married. So they had some caring, concerned, loving relationship between the two of them. And if he was going to have to divorce her quietly and put her away, that was going to break his heart. Um, they, 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 they were betrothed. They were going to be husband and wife. Also broke his heart that he knew that even with him divorcing her, she could still suffer the death penalty. A public stoning be put to death for being pregnant outside of wedlock so he knew that was a possibility also um he knew if he married her if he if, if they finalized the marriage remember being betrothed they were married but not fully it, it's basically like a, a permanent engagement <laughs> well anyways long story short but if he did take her fully as his wife then he'd be subject to public scorn you know um because he's marrying a woman who's not a virgin a woman who's pregnant by another man. So he was in a very tough place to make a decision what was the best thing to do. Bottom line was he cared for her, so he thought he would just divorce her quietly. So that's his sorrow, that he wrestled with that, and that was probably going to be his decision until the angel came to him in his dream. So here's this angel telling him what's happening, telling him the story, what's really, you know, it must have been so much on his mind. I, I don't know if he could probably even sleep with this much on his mind. But in his dream state, the angel came, talked to him, explained what was going to happen, told him what to do. Now, we know Joseph was a right and just man, it says, which he was a Jew. So we can assume being right and just, he knew his scriptures. He knew his prophecies. 
he knew Jewish tradition, history, oral tradition, as well as written. And he may have connected some dots when the angel talked to him and felt this is probably something pretty important here. And in that, again, being a just man who believed in God, a righteous man, he found some source of strength and consolation in this. And that became his joy, his, his joy to serve God and to follow through with God's instructions via the messenger angel. So sorrow, he at one point thought he had to leave her or put her away. Joy, God came and reassured him and told him, here's a plan. It's my plan. I want you to follow through. So what does that mean to, to us? So I, all I can do is speak for myself. And to me, it means that sometimes when there's sorrows or negative things in our lives or destruction or crises or disasters, and there's sorrows and heartbreak and hurt feelings, when we let God in and listen to him, pray to him and ask for the spirit to come to us, we can find joy and consolation. It may not be what we think it is. I mean, Joseph probably went to bed having no idea. This Oh, could this possibly be the son of God? No, he just knew it was a bad day because his, his fiance, if you will, was pregnant. I mean, he had, he had no idea what the answer to this would be. And that's what happens to us is that we have some bad disaster going on or a bad thing. And we can't see beyond the tip of our nose and say, oh, how am I going to get out of this situation? How am I going to rectify this or make it right? We stop. We look to God, to Jesus, we invite the Spirit in, and sometimes that solution and that joy can come into our heart. It may not be the solution we wanted. Now, I'm sure Joseph, you know, he, he probably, he, I'm sure, you know, one would argue that you know, he's still taking a chance, you know, by going ahead and marrying, marrying Mary, <laughs> um, but he's putting his faith in God because he sees this as God's plan. That's what we need to do. Sometimes the answers to our problems may not be what they, we think they are. They might not seem to be the right answer, but if we discern and let the spirit in, they are the right answer and we'll be joy in our heart and we'll find relief and solace. That's my take. I'm sure you have your own as far as sorrows and joys like that work out. Um, but let us pray. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Litany of St. Joseph. I'll read the responses. Um, to each of the um, to each, to each of the uh, lines, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us, Holy Mary, pray for us, Saint Joseph, pray for us, Noble Son of the House of David, pray for us, Light of Patriarchs, pray for us, Husband of the Mother of God, pray for us. Guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Foster Father of the Son of God, pray for us. Faithful Guardian of Christ, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph Chaste and Just, pray for us. Joseph Prudent and Brave, pray for us. Joseph Obedient and Loyal, pray for us. Pattern of Patience, pray for us. Lover of Poverty, pray for us. Model of workers, pray for us. Example to parents, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of family life, pray for us. Comfort of the troubled, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of evil spirits, pray for us. Protector of the church, pray for us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. God made him master of his household and put him in charge of all that he owned. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your infinite wisdom and love, you chose Joseph to be the husband of Mary, the mother of your son. As we enjoy his protection on earth, 
May we have the help of his prayers in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Thanks for joining in. Um, I'm going to upload this and post the link and share it. And we'll figure out if we want to do it together next weekend somehow, like a teleconference, like a call in. Um, if not, I'll probably still record it and put it there. And then people can do it on their own time. God bless y'all. Take care and be safe.